Hiya, so we really are living in the golden age of synthesis at the moment. There's all these little companies coming through with incredible sounding synths. And for me, this one at the moment takes the crown. It's my new favourite. The Groove Synthesis Third Wave. Named the Third Wave because of the PPG Wave 2.2 on which it's based. That had two oscillators and this has three. But... It's got a ton more stuff than that, believe you me. It's three oscillators times four because there's four synth engines in here. It can do everything the original PPG can do. And it's, I mean, I've never owned an original PPG or played one, but for me, it sounds like I feel it should sound. And regardless, it sounds incredible. Absolutely love it. I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough and uh, play you some sounds. By the way, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so now and click that alert bell as well because YouTube's trying to bury me these days. It's not pushing my videos up. What have I done to Google? Nothing, but it's not supporting me, I'm afraid. So please do click that alert bell and you'll get videos through as they come. All right, let's check it out. As I said, you've got three oscillators. You've got the choice of the PPG original wavetables, which are 8-bit, very low-fi. Apparently, uh, they were sampled at very high sampling rates, even though it's 8-bit. And that created this ghostly octave above the sound. That's what you hear, this sort of... Sounds like aliasing, but it's not aliasing, apparently. You can hear that little octave above. And as you scan through the wave, you get the different textures. So it's a very dirty sound, it's a great sound, I love it. It's very, very characterful. Even just one oscillator like that with a little bit of wobble. Straight away it's pretty vibey. You can automate the movement of the wavetable using the wave envelope, or you can use other methods as well. There's plenty of methods to do stuff on here. So much modulation possibilities. But the wave envelope is great because you can set the time and the position. It's going up to two, back to three, four, five, like that. And you can loop it round as well. The cool thing is as well, you can use that wave envelope to modulate other things. So you've got the PPG waves. The cool thing about these original PPG waves as well is they've put a lot of the presets in so they're ready to go set up and they sound great. You've got this thing called wave flow here by the way as well. If you have it on it smooths the waves because when you go from one part of the wave to the next uh, it's called interpolation. If you interpolate between the two it's smooth. If you don't it's much more jarring and that's kind of the character of the original PPG. It didn't interpolate and it was quite jarring. That's what gives it its personality. But sometimes it's not desirable, so it's great that sometimes you've got the option to smooth that. Probably can't hear that much difference. It depends on the waveform. Some of them are really up and down, and the ones that are like that, it does jump quite a bit. That smooths that anyway, if you want to. The other thing worth noting here is use upper wavetable. If you have the smoothing off and the upper wavetable on, then you're at the setting of the original PPG. And if I show you the wave here, you can see a graph of it. Right at the end, there's these different waveforms. And apparently that was on the original PPG to stop the sound from falling off the edge of the cliff, you know, when it got to the end of the wavetable before it went into the next one. And they've duplicated that exactly the same here. You might think that's a bit pointless, but actually there's a good point to it as well, because you've got these waves, which are, you know, a triangle, saw, square and pulse. With 8-bit resolution. So they've got that kind of spectral weirdness going on. And it's different from the virtual analog waves, which I'll show you later. These are much more crusty. So I've found them really inspiring to use as a kind of replacement of an analog oscillator. 
got tons of character, that really gritty, digital sort of 8-bit character. Let's go back now, though, and I'll show you the more modern waves. These ones denoted by U. These are modern waves that they've put in that are high resolution, 96K. As you can see, they're really big sounding. Uh, very different sound from the others and really good. Those are really good waves. Yeah, there's quite a few variations. You can take the smoothing off if you want, then you get the... That's where you can really hear what the smoothing does. Switch it back on. Great to have both the options. I won't go through all the sounds, but I'll give you a couple. See, the awesome thing about wavetable synthesis is you get all this movement before you've even messed around with the filters and the envelopes. You know, you can approach sounds in a bit of a different way. Of course, you can still use them, but it already sounds awesome, just completely open and listening to these waves. You can also make your own waves, and it's super easy. It's got this uh, wavetable maker. It just couldn't be simpler. You can either just plug in a mic and just do it like that, or you can import a wave in, any mono wave that's 96K. I've messed around with that a little bit. I've only made a couple. Uh, let me find one. <laughs> I mean, that's just me speaking. You know, then you can find the sweet spot of it. You can also use this wave surfer to do that, um, and it moves the pos offset position of all the waves. And often you can find sounds you wouldn't have thought of by accident, really, by using this wave server. You can also like use LFO to move along the wave, which I sometimes find that's quite cool. This is an unruly beast. See how exciting it is to explore. We're just listening to one oscillator. You know, we've got three. We can give them all different modulations. The wave envelope can be different from for all three of them. It's just the, the possibilities are just infinite almost. Let me go on to showing you the virtual analog stuff. got sawtooth, square, triangle, sine, and super saw. The wave offset acts as pulse width modulation. So you get that super saw sound like that. Uh, you've also got uh, white to pink to red noise. The other thing I think is quite cool is to be able to, for instance, let's have a, just randomly pick a wave. That one, then I can maybe put a sine wave below it, for instance, you know, just to sort of fatten it out a bit. And what you can very easily do is copy parts. So I've got that sound now. Let's copy that to two. And then I can pan them left and right, detune them a bit. 
And Bob's your uncle, you've got a big fat sound. <laughs> Beautiful. That's with no reverb or anything. Let's add another one. Because cause you've got 24 note polyphony, you know, you can really stack these things up and you don't really feel it. You know, even at 24, that's what, um, maths was never my strong point. Eight. That's eight notes. You know, even when you've times it by three, it's still eight notes. <laughs> Not even using any filters or anything, that's just the sound of the wave being a bit detuned and panned. You've got an analog low pass filter here, which is the same filter apparently that they're using in the Prophet 5. Now that is unusual because it's super fat and yet it's got really high resonance. And that's because they've got something here called ResComp compensates for the lack of bass because when you crank up the resonance on this type of filter, you always lose bass. So they've devised this genius thing where it just compensates for that. And that makes for incredible resonant sounds. You can get really fat. I mean, if I switch it off, it sounds like this. On. Yes! It's fat! You can also um, add saturation to the filter, which is really cool. You probably can't hear it on this type of patch, but... You can hear it, actually, because it's smoothing out the resonance there. And if you're on, like, a wavetable type sound, it sort of adds harmonics. You hear that? So easy to get great sounds on this thing, it's incredible. One thing I've got to say, Bob, well done, because the user interface on this thing is remarkable. It's so easy for such a deep synth. I haven't had to look at the manual once. It's so well set out. It's almost everything is knob per function. It's very, very easy to understand, even though there's a hell of a lot under the hood here. Um, and that is a brilliant bit of design, I think. Also, you've got a lot of routing possibilities with this mod matrix here. For instance, you can bring in with aftertouch, let's say, let's say we copy a th two to three again. So now we've got three parts, but the third one, I'm going to turn the oscillator down and pitch it up a fifth, let's say. So then I can bring that in with pressure. And then you have also can use a pedal, you can modulate with the mod wheel, the pitch, there's just tons of, you can, you know, honestly, it's a sound designer's dream. So it's really easy to dial in these changing spaces, which I love because it just makes it so interactive, the sound, and kind of gives it a modern vibe, I think, you know, it's the sort of thing you can't get out of a vintage synth easily. They've put so much into this thing, honestly, you've got a sequencer here as well four parts, four different sounds if you want, and you can chain it into a song as well. So that's pretty awesome. Each one of the parts can have a different arpeggiator setting as well.
I'll tell you, this thing is just an absolute beast. There's a little example of um, some of the modulation possibilities. See, the FM amount is being brought in and out by the LFO. And you can get that to do all sorts of different things. You, know, you can bring it in and out the reverb, for example. Oh, help if I switched it on. Let's get it to bring some other stuff in. What is it, LFO one? It's just so easy to do these sort of things on this. Uh, go on the matrix, LFO one, what should I get it to do? I don't know, let's get it to go change the frequency. No, let's not get it to do that. <laughs> let's get it to do the, um, I know. I know, state variable filter. Look, there's so much in this synth. I can't show you everything in one go. I'm going to do another video later on when I've had it for a bit longer. Suffice to say, I'm really in love with this thing. It sounds incredible. Let me play a few of the sounds off program.